just that. Uh, hello, awesome humans. Uh, my name is Mark Wildman, otherwise known as Mad Mark for some odd reason. Uh, and I'm probably best known uh, for being that dude that walked out on Dragon's Den, firing smoke rings that looked a little bit like those ones, making some slime, and getting a little bit of investment into my company. And I'm also very fancy, as you can see. Uh, the mission, what it's all about, is making science awesome for one million kids. So we do that by making sweets, making slime, uh, building catapults, launching rockets, blowing stuff up, and all kinds of other assorted nonsense at uh, children's science parties and by going into primary schools and making science as fun as I wish it had been in the classroom when I was eight years old. But today uh, isn't massively about uh, an ego trip for me, which it's unfortunate, but uh, it's, really, it's really about actually helping. Uh, that's my goal uh, for today, to actually help um, by sharing with you the one thing that I wish someone had shared with me when I started out on uh, my journey. Which brings us to the rather fancy pants title of uh, Testing Beats Talent and uh, the big lie we've been told about success, again, in little quotes, because obviously success means different things to every single one of you, and that's only right. But I think the lie as a society that's told about success is that to be successful, to make your dent in the universe, you've got to be particularly talented, which is another one of those words that uh, makes me want to vomit slightly and makes me a little bit angry. Um, because it's not really true. You don't actually need to be talented at all. Um, testing beats talent is the title, and hopefully I'll uh, do a good enough job of sharing that idea so it makes a little bit of sense. So to tell you, to share it with you, I'm just going to start off with my story. So real quick, uh, my company started out with some pretty humble beginnings out of my parents' spare room with a lot of boxes kind of packaged up everywhere. So many boxes. I was uh, 23 years old. Uh, I'd never run a business before, had no business experience. Uh, and it was also 2008. So any time I looked at a television or listened to a radio or saw a newspaper, uh, everyone told me that the sky was falling in, uh, the world was about to end, and the apocalypse was coming. So it was all, <laughs> it was all pretty depressing, actually, now I think back. Um, but I promise that this will get less depressing, hopefully. Because my uh, background is as a scientist. So I have got a master's degree in physics, um, which when I started out, up until about last year, I thought was probably the worst background it's possible to have to start a business. To make matters worse, I literally specialized in quantum mechanics. So that's the type of physics that's not actually even real, uh, <laughs> to make it even more useless, really, uh, which is uh, unfortunate. So I was a little bit bitter and angry about that for uh, a few years, really. But um, it actually worked out OK, because the one useful takeaway of it all, really, the science, my science background gave me a massive appreciation of the value of testing. Um, testing is testing and finding out whether it works or not, and testing again and doing so intelligently is what put a man on the moon with less, like a billionth less power than you have on your mobile phone. It's what has cured so many diseases. Most human innovations and most scientific accomplishment has just been caused by smart people testing stuff. So I figured if it's good enough for the most bright, brilliant people on planet Earth, it's probably good enough for me. Uh, so I did a lot of that testing stuff. Eight years of fairly relentless testing uh, later. That's the only other bit of bad news. The whole testing thing isn't exactly a quick win miracle cure, magic secret. Uh, it requires a lot of work, uh, which again is a bit unfortunate. But it's good news, because a bunch of awesome stuff happened at the end of all that testing. So uh, obviously, that is me with Her Majesty the Queen. Uh, as Siddy said, we got a Queen's Award for Enterprise, uh, which is obviously lovely. Um, that is the Institute of Directors got uh, a fancy pants plaque from them, won a Great British Entrepreneur Award. Uh, helped Richard Branson to break a Guinness World Record, which is something that I've wanted to do since I was about six years old. And Downing Street said some nice stuff about what we do as well, which is very, very lovely. But I think more importantly, really, in the grand scheme of things, is we've made science awesome for more than half a million kids now. So 
We're past half a million, and we're fast closing in on that goal of making science awesome for one million kids. So uh, whenever you see these things, I always figured quoting yourself would be rather fancy. Um, <laughs> So I figured, why not? Um, don't tell anyone I'm not particularly talented. If you wouldn't mind not sharing that with um, competitors, rivals, uh, it makes me uh, feel better and sleep well at night. Uh, but I don't really consider myself a particularly talented person. Whenever anyone uses that word to describe me, I get, well, I start banging on about this stuff, really, and, <laughs> and bore them to tears. So, uh, unfortunately, there is a better approach, and that approach is testing. Uh, one other benefit of testing that I think is it's the only cure, or semi-cure, for the fear of failure that I've ever come across. Uh, if you are the type of person, if you're watching me right now, the very chances are that you are the type of person that wants to make a little bit of a dent in the universe in whatever way or shape or form is important to you. And if you're that type of person, whenever you start to do that, to take those first actions, if you're anything like me, good old fear of failure will crop up and uh, scare you, stop you sleeping at night, and be fairly horrific, quite frankly. Um, but the only closest I've ever found to a cure is testing, because testing doesn't really matter. Tests just have results. If the result is positive, that's amazing. If the result is negative, then it's just a test that yielded a negative result. It's nothing to get too stressed about, nothing to get worked up about. And if you just test again, as long as you pick the winners and cut the losers, you are literally certain for it to work out well, which is quite good for a strategy, really. So I uh, just want to give three quick examples to kind of make it real, because I'm aware that I've I'm uh, you know, sort of wrapping on about, <laughs> about science, which is not always the easiest thing to understand. So three simple tests. The first one uh, was a dude called Pareto, the guy from, who founded the whole 80-20 principle. We found that 80% of our science learning occurred in 20% of our programs. So I'd invented a load of stuff that I thought was really fun and would make science awesome for kids. We were attempting to do all of that stuff. And by picking the smaller group of that stuff that most of the kids most enjoyed, got most value from, and was most popular, uh, were able to grow the company by 36x, so 3,600%, over a eight-year period, which is uh, incredible, and get close to that one million goal, which is what I'm working on. Which brings us to simple test uh, number two, was testing book titles. When I first published my first uh, children's science experiment book, funnily enough, I uh, was really stuck for a title. I just couldn't figure out a good title for a book. Um, so instead of just picking randomly, I decided to come up with a few different titles. And every time we do one of our science parties for the kids, I'd tell them all, there's this amazing book that teaches you how to make slime and launch rockets. And then I'd tell them each time a different title, ask them if they wanted a copy, and I'd count how many of them said yes. I wasn't mean. I did give them like a card so they could get the book when it existed. I wasn't mean about it. <laughs> and simple test number three was some online testing. Uh, I tested a bunch of stuff online. Uh, which enabled us to give away four times as many copies of uh, the book Don't Eat Your Slime than we were giving away before, which means we've now given away 100,000 copies of that science experiment book to kids all around the world, including these uh, lovely-looking dudes who are on the hillside somewhere in Africa doing science experiments uh, with a book. So this testing thing uh, is real. It does work. It's powerful. I guess every good scientist always has to kind of wrap up with a conclusion. Um, and if I can leave you with anything, uh, I guess it would be this. Uh, don't waste a moment questioning whether you're talented enough to pursue whatever dream, goal, or vision might be most important to you. Uh, test fast, test often, fail regularly. Uh, it's easy to do, uh, but unfortunately, like the vast majority of things that work in life, it's easier not to do. Um, I wish you, obviously, all the happy testing in the world. I wish you the best of luck. Happy testing. I hope it works out brilliant for you. Thank you for listening to me, and stay awesome.